Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before I introduce my guest, I just want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Blue Chew. Blue Chew is a low cost online subscription service that delivers chewable tablets with the same ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. So if you need some extra confidence in the bedroom, Blue Chew is the discreet, safe, and cheap way to go. Go to bluechew.com and use code Holly to get your very first shipment for free only pay $5 in shipping. That's bluechew.com. Use code Holly to try your first dosage for free. Only pay $5 shipping. Okay, let's get to it. So today I have a highly requested guest. You guys have been asking for her for a long time and I am here to deliver. Uh, She's been in the industry for 14 years and has started over 800 hardcore scenes. In fact, she's so OG that we shot her for my mom's website back in the day, Suze.net, which a lot of people like don't even know exists anymore, which is kind of sad. So um, I'm very excited to see her again. She is the co-host of this year's XRCO Awards. And I'm also very thrilled to talk about her sobriety journey. You guys know that's like one of my favorite topics. Let's welcome the beautiful Jennifer White. Hi. Hi. Yay. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so <laughs> excited to see you. Yay. It has been a minute. So long. <laughs> yeah. I mean, before we started the show, we were talking about how long it's been since mm-hmm. I shot you. So did my mom shoot you first, like herself? Yes. So about... 2010, I think. That would have been like at the very end of her career, I think. She was on her way out, I think. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, yeah, we did a shoot then. And then you shot me like a year or two, I think, after that. Yeah. And yeah. What so was it? Cool. <laughs> what was it like? Like, because a lot of people don't know. My mom is Suze Randall, by the way, if you don't know who she is. Um, there are quite a few people in the industry who, who don't know who she is. She's a legend. You need so, to educate yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So what, uh, I mean, what was, what, what was it like? Like, what did you hear, had heard about her? And was she what you expected? Um, when I initially shot for her, I didn't know very much about her. But then after shooting for her, everyone kept telling me just how, you know, big she was. And not only, you know, porn, but mainstream as well. And yeah, that was really cool. Afterwards, I was like, kind of shocked. Yeah. She's, um... She's she's exactly the same. Is she? Yes. <laughs> um, she only has one eye now, though. I think she had both eyes when you saw her. Oh, wow. So she got kicked in the face by a horse, but didn't oh, slow her down. Shit. Um, she's still the same person. She's Can I just curse? older and a little bit crazier. Mm-hmm. But um, I will tell her. I will tell her that I interviewed you today. Tell her to say hi. Yeah. I will. I will mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Um. So speaking of a long time ago, let's get started. At the very beginning of your career, how did you get into the adult industry? Um, so I was, you know, kind of in debt at the time and was looking for a quick way out. And like I was on Craigslist for some reason. Oh God. Un- unrelated. That's always a bad way to start. I know. <laughs> um, and then I came across uh, Metro Talent. Remember them? Oh yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yes, I do. <laughs> So I went in for an interview with them, and then here I am, 14 years later. So did you just – so you weren't looking in, like, the adult sex work ad space? You I was were on, on there, there for something else, and then, like, something caught your eye, and you're like, hmm, wait a minute, maybe I could do that. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just, like, found the ad on there randomly, and it wasn't even on my radar, really. Like, I had uh, worked at a tanning salon before that, and I was an airbrusher. Mm-hmm. I actually used to spray tan Stormy. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Wait, before you got into porn? Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. That's funny, right? <laughs> was she was she performing then, or was she just dancing? I think she was performing. Okay. Pretty sure, yeah. So you didn't, like, happen to see her after you saw this ad and, like, ask her any advice about... No. The porn industry, no. No. Just, okay. <laughs> so so you go in and you meet with them. Like, how much experience did you have with porn just in terms of, like, had you watched it before? Like, what were your expectations? Um, do you remember, um, what was it? It wasn't LimeWire. It was, like, another one of those. 
Like Napster? Kind of, yeah. yeah. Kazaa. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I downloaded my first porn on there. Okay. <laughs> and that was pretty much a uh, blowjob, like an instructional video. Oh, okay. So you were like looking to be educated <laughs> mm-hmm. and entertained at the same time. And then there's like one other porno I downloaded on there, but that was the extent of my experience. So you'd only seen two porn scenes? Yeah. Wow. I'm wondering yeah. if it was an instructional video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you like think about that video when you did your first scene? You're like, hmm, like recalling Kinda, what yeah. maybe you learned. <laughs> what was funny is that I didn't want to give a blowjob on my first scene. <laughs> really? Why? I don't know. I, in my head, I was like, it's somehow it's degrading. Interesting. Which I'm so the opposite now. I'm like, yeah. like it's hot. Yeah. Like, do that. Yes. I can, <laughs> I can see that. I've heard that from some people because, you know, I mean, I think especially when you think about people who are very conservative and, you know, like who obviously have sex because they're married and they want to start a family or whatnot, but they won't do the blowjob thing because, I don't know, it's like extracurricular activities or something like that and probably just feels like it's not, I don't know if people think it's not natural. I don't know. People have all kinds of thoughts about why blowjobs might be degrading. I think it was the fact that I didn't think I looked good with my mouth or mm. my jaw dislocated. <laughs> like. Yeah. I mean, it's a, lo- it's a different look. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but you, <laughs> it's, a, it's a look, it's a vibe. Um, so you feel differently now? Yes. Yes, I do. And like, how do you feel that you look like giving a blowjob now like what's your thoughts when you look at the that picture or video now it's almost like I get a kick out of looking super pristine before Mm -hmm. the blowjob and then like looking just disheveled and ruined afterwards ruined yeah so that's like a game for me at this point like I want to look like a totally different person yeah is (laughs) it beginning to end is it because you want to feel like you look like you put the work in? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Spot on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I personally think that blowjobs are empowering because it's like this – it's the one sex act where you have complete control over your partner's pleasure, right? Mm-hmm. Like you get to decide how fast you go, how slow you go, like how you do it. You have control over like when they ejaculate. Yeah. Um, and also, like, you know, low-key, like, you could just bite their dick off if you wanted to. So there's there's <laughs> that, too. There's a, like, element of danger. I don't know. Maybe that's just what goes through my head. <laughs> totally. But, I mean, I, I I love giving. I give great head. Yeah. Just saying. You guys will never see it, but just rest assured I give good head. You have an OnlyFans, right? Do you- I do, but I don't do that on you there. You don't? Mm-mm. Okay. I'm, like, very tame. I'm, like, super, like – Soft corn nude. Very, very boring. Cool. Yeah. I get a lot of people who are like, where's your butthole? I'm like, not here. Where's your butthole? The, specifically, people want to see that. It's like. Interesting. I don't, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> of all the things, like, because I also don't do, like, open leg or spreads or anything. It's like mm-hmm. the butthole. I don't know. They go right before that. Wow. Anyways, enough about me. Um, <laughs> let's go back to you and your first scene. So, yeah, tell me about, like, your first, like adult scene who was it with what was it like what was going through your head it was for uh vivid brand new faces okay and it was with alex gons and um i just remember being really nervous and not knowing really what to expect Mm -hmm. and like not wanting to sound dumb i remember that Mm. like the interview portion of it Oh, there was an interview at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, brand new faces. They want to know about you. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And then how did you feel like the scene went? I think it went good. Mm -hmm. I mean, mean, he's a great performer. Yeah. But, but yeah, made me feel really comfortable. That's good. That's great to have a first experience like that. Not Mm -hmm. everybody has that privilege, unfortunately. True. So, okay, so you do your first scene. So what are you thinking now? Are you thinking, oh, my gosh, this is actually something that, like, I could I could do and continue on with? Absolutely. Once I got in it, I was like, I'm, I'm kind of good at this. I think I'll <laughs> stick around. That blowjob instructional video really, like, yeah. did me a solid. <laughs> <laughs> took, took 
good notes. <laughs> Do you remember like your first scene that you felt was like really good that was kind of maybe you coming into your own and you know, that that was that moment that it was like, yes, like when Jennifer White was born? Hmm, that's a good question. I kind of want to say that it's the scene I did called Six in Me. I was a cheerleader, mm -hmm. did the football team. And that's like the one that I still to this day, like people still come up to me complimenting me on. So like, that's what I want to say. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I was already kind of there. Yeah. Mentally at that point. Yeah. So yeah. Six and Mia, is it, I'm assuming it's a gangbang scene? Yeah. <laughs> wow. That is, um, how was that? That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. What do you, do you, what do you enjoy about gangbangs? I think it's the chaos of it all. Mm. Just like, I mean, my personality, I'm very like responsible and structured and like, when I'm in that kind of a scenario, I'm like totally out of my element and I like it. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's really good. <laughs> yeah. I think that's pretty common for people like, cause sex is when you kind of flip that switch, right. And you get to let go of who you are in your daily life and you get to just lose yourself in the moment. Yeah. Cause you see like, you know, all of those top, you know, hardcore CEOs and executives who are like, you know, big bosses of big companies. And then they like go to a dominatrix and like to get like whipped and humiliated. And, like, They're the real freaks. Yes. Yeah. You know <laughs> what I mean? But it makes sense to me. It's like, that's that one time where like, you don't have to make decisions. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be in control. And there's something really freeing about that. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of uh, six and me, you did a 50 guy cream pie scene. Oh no, 50 cream pie scene with 32 guys a while back. How does that, that math doesn't add up. <laughs> multiple guys came. Twice, multiple times? Uh, multiple times, yeah. Okay, that's, which is impressive. Mm -hmm. Not every guy can come twice. Yeah. So um, let's do the math here. That means that 18 guys came twice, right? 50 minus 32 is 18. Something like that. <laughs> Math is not my strong suit, but I think I think I'm right here. I would I need to know now. I just remember yes. hearing Jim Powers like throw another shirt on because they all had numbered shirts. So. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, that's funny. Yeah. So how was that? <laughs> it was fun. The, um, it was intense. Um, Ron Jeremy hosted it, which was oh really? <laughs> wow, that is a throwback. Yeah. So this was a while ago. Yes, this was a while ago. Um. What else? Uh, Jim Powers had this, um, like, he was friends with this band, which their thing was, like, fetish, and they dressed in all, like, um, leather and, uh, what is it, latex, mm -hmm. and, like, whipped each other. And so that's what was going around me on stage. They were all, like, singing and whipping each other, and I'm just getting railed by wow. 32 dudes. So it's like a whole, like, circus extravaganza event. That was, Yeah. <laughs> That is really interesting. Yeah, that was that was a cool day. <laughs> My question is, who had to clean up afterwards? It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> That's always like the one thing that I think about because I have shot a few gangbangs, not many, and often I'm the one who cleans up afterwards, which I don't mind. Like, honestly, I know people think that's weird, but like cum doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. um, so like I'm fine cleaning up like cum. It's like whatever, you mm -hmm. know? But uh, 50 cream pies. Most of them oh, were inside dumb. me. Yeah, but still, like, still. they came out <laughs> yeah, they at some did. point, right? Like, you, you didn't hold all that in you. Nope, not that talented. <laughs> I mean, were you can – I, can I ask you kind of like a gross question? Yeah. Were you, like, leaking for the rest of the day? Sort of. I mean, I douche afterwards. So like, yeah. Okay. That takes care of that issue. But that like, does make sense. I've had a nice back for the remainder of the day, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that's rough. Yeah. But you had fun. Yes, a lot of fun. Wow. Very intense. Don't what know if I'd do it again, but... Yeah. yeah. I feel like like a 50-guy cream pie is, like, something... It's a once-in-a-lifetime yeah. opportunity. It's like climbing Mount Everest. Like, you don't need to do it more than once. Yeah, bucket You can just say that Check. you did it exactly. <laughs> what... I know this is, like... This is such the producer in me, like, asking these questions. What furniture did you do it on? Ooh, it was on a stage. And then, like, an ottoman. Dude, That I hope they yeah. threw that ottoman out afterwards. 
It wasn't a big red ottoman, was it? I think somebody brought it home. A big probably. red circular ottoman? Maybe. Because they're, okay, I say this, this is kind of a random aside, but I remember I was shooting at this new location a while back and there was a big red circular ottoman there. Mm-hmm. And the guy was like showing me around and he's like, okay, and we have this to work on. And I just kind of looked at it and it had like a lot of white stains on it. And he was like, yeah, Jim Powers uses this a lot. I'm like, I'm never shooting on that. (laughs) I'm like, you can just put that to the side. I am not putting anyone on that fucking Ottoman. If Jim Powers (laughs) shoots on that a lot, there's no fucking way I'm using that thing. That thing is covered in shit. Do not take a black light to that thing. (laughs) Dude, I know, right? Do not take a black light to any porn set. Oh, God. Like, absolute, (laughs) just, unless you're into that kind of thing. I don't know. People have, people have fetishes. (laughs) If you're into, like, cum-covered furniture. If you are, boy, oh, boy, do I have some couches for you. Maybe you can make, like, a paint by numbers with it. (laughs) That would be kind of an interesting art piece if someone, <laughs> like, I'm not even joking, if guys, like, came all over, like, a canvas and then you took a black light to it and then, like, painted some kind of abstract art on it. It's kind of beautiful. It is kind of beautiful. <laughs> mm-hmm. I feel like this could be, like, the next Bans- Banksy. I have a thing where at home where you can, like, throw paint all over yourself and, like, fuck on a canvas, oh, which I think is pretty cool. That is really cool. Mm-hmm. Have you used it? Not yet. I want to, though. I mean, you should – That that's like a scene, and then, like, you can auction off the canvas, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. That's Depending cool. on how good it is, I might frame it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you could do it more than once. True. That could be, like, your thing. Practice it could be, like – it, it could be your art. I mean, here you – there you go. There's your next career path. You're I an like artist. It. You're an artist like now. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you get into porn – you are, you know, uh, doing quite successfully. Um, how did your family react to that? Were you close to your family? Yeah, my family's been pretty cool the whole time. Really? It was my husband's family that was more Mm. of the issue than my own. That, I get that. Were you surprised that your family was pretty accepting or was it something that you kind of knew they'd be okay with? Growing up, I was always able to come to them with, you know, talking about sex and you know subjects that most parents don't talk to their kids about so I was very fortunate in that aspect of it but yeah. Yeah. um and but your husband's how did your husband so I'm assuming you were married when you got into porn I was in porn for about a month before I met my husband and then oh. we got married that same year okay mm-hmm. was he in the industry not at the time mm-hmm. okay he is now he is now mm-hmm. okay are we allowed to say who he is or should we should we not? No one will know who he is. I mean, oh. his name's Deacon. He works for Jim Powers. He's his production manager. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know who he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so did they know that he worked in porn? Uh, no, well. Your husband, Deacon's family. They, he was in construction. His mm-hmm. whole family basically is part of the same company. Mm-hmm. And um, they... <clears throat> knew that he kind of quit his job to do something else. Mm-hmm. And they knew that he was starting to work for, um, they didn't know his name, but Jim as mm-hmm. a PA. Mm-hmm. So they kind of knew a little mm-hmm. bit that he was dipping his toe in, but they didn't know about me. They thought I was a makeup artist. Right. So like, yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. They really liked me though for years and then they found out and then, Went kind of bad, but it was that's a bummer. It's yeah. a shame too when like people know you first and then change their mind about you once they find out you do porn because it's like you as a person hasn't changed exactly, it's just what you do for a living. Mm-hmm. But that shouldn't be the reason that people judge you, right? Unless right. like you kill babies or something, I would, I would judge you for that. That would Valid. be valid, pretty, pretty bad, <laughs> but otherwise, you know what I mean, like Jennifer. <laughs> Killing babies, really? Yeah, I mean that's like that. I feel like is not a cool career path to go down. I would, I would not be okay with that. But you know, yeah, when they're you... very, very Christian, so say no more. Yes, say no more. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, we're gonna take a quick commercial break, and then when we come back, we're gonna talk about so much more Jennifer White, including um, her recent sobriety, which you guys know is like one of my favorite topics. 
So stick around. We'll be back in just a sec. This episode of Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by Blue Chew. Stress comes at us in so many different ways, whether it's financial, family, or work. And for men, it can really affect how you perform in the bedroom. And ED problems can definitely make it harder to connect with your partner in an intimate way. This is not something that's easy to talk about, but this is so common and affects millions of men. It might be time for you to try Blue Chew, a discreet online telehealth service that delivers prescription chewable tablets with the same ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. All you have to do is go online and fill out an easy questionnaire, and one of their licensed medical providers will find the right prescription just for you. It'll be shipped right to your door. No embarrassing doctor's visits or trips to the pharmacy. They prepare and ship direct, so it's even cheaper than other alternatives. You can reclaim your sex life and that special intimate connection with your partner that you've been missing. If you're experiencing ED, don't be afraid to reach out for help. Blue Chew is a convenient, affordable, and discreet way to help you get what you need. And here's a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code HOLLY at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code HOLLY, all one word, to receive your first month for free. Hello, everybody. We're your back. So, Jennifer, you've been in the industry for a long time, but you mm-hmm. haven't really done many interviews over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, you've started doing them more recently. Is there a reason why you're more open to talking about yourself personally now than before? Yeah, I think I'm just in the best place I've been mentally in my mm-hmm. entire career. And before um, kind of showing my personality gave me a lot of anxiety mm. and um I did a lot of drugs because of it yeah so I think now that I'm more just comfortable in my own skin that it's it's time it's time to show you guys yeah me yeah <laughs> so let's let's talk about that let's talk about your drug addiction issue maybe if you can tell me you know, how it first started, where it took you, and how you ended up finally getting sober. So it started right around when I started in the industry. Um, I was dabbling with, like, meth here and there, and then I got into heroin for a little bit. And then, um, keep in mind, my husband was sober the entire time we've been together. So, like this was something that I was hiding from him the whole time. And um, and that was really hard because I'm a horrible liar. And, like, it was so obvious because of how much weight I was losing and just you could, you could see it. I was looking older, like, mm-hmm. and I think um, it took many, many, many years to get sober. But, like, once I finally took a good look at myself and was just, like, you look like shit. Like, you feel like shit. You're so sad all the time, you know? Yeah. So, like, I just said something's got to give. It's got to – something's got to change. Yeah. Did you try to get sober during that long time period and just, like, failed? Or did you not even try? Well, I was – caught basically every month or so so like I was forced to get sober for like a day or two and then I'd eventually fall back into it Mm -hmm. so like yeah it took a long time for me to get sober sober like um I got sober off of hard drugs like that that was first I got sober off of heroin and meth and all that and then I started doing pills Mm -hmm. And then it was Xanax and it was Oxys and it was Adderalls and um, that was easier to hide. So yeah, um, did that and I don't know, just being so, so sad all the time was really hard to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. Mm-hmm. Um, do you, I mean, looking back now and having the perspective that you have, Do you know why you were an addict? Do you know why you did drugs? It was an escapism thing for sure. Mm -hmm. Like I did not want to be in my reality. I didn't want to face the actual problems I was going through. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to 
throw a band-aid on it somehow mm-hmm. and continue with life and drugs weren't fun for me like they are for some people it's like I did them because I had to I had to get through the day mm-hmm. and I wasn't able to I was gonna be passed out for three days if I didn't get high so mm-hmm. like yeah do you think that working so you said that you wanted to escape your reality was being in the porn industry part of that or was it just overall uncomfortable in your own skin um I mean something pretty serious before porn happened to me Mm -hmm. and I think I kind of used porn as an outlet for that Mm -hmm. so like I think porn was more of an outlet for me than anything Mm -hmm. like there's the stereotype you know we're all on drugs we're all you know this and that but that wasn't reality for me I had to hide it from everybody on set I wasn't like I would get sent home if anybody knew that I was high Mm -hmm. so like yeah this wasn't something that I shared with anybody it's just yeah yeah I mean I asked those questions because I mean you just nailed it like the stereotype that everyone in porn is on drugs because you know there's going to be people who are listening to this who are going to be like well of course she did drugs she's in the porn industry which is like a horrible place to be and everybody there doesn't want to be there and Mm -hmm. they have to do drugs to get through the day so that's why I was kind of trying to like see what you know the issue behind the addiction was was it porn was it something else and then so it's interesting for you to say that porn was like your outlet Mm -hmm. um, and not the base of the problem right because I think that's what most people see that's what they assume mm-hmm. yeah and like you know I mean I speak to you and I ask you these questions also as like a recovering alcoholic and like so I like everything that you say I know it's hard sometimes for people to comprehend what it's like to be an addict because it's like well why don't you just stop doing it and it's like it's it's not that easy mm-hmm. and it's kind of impossible to explain to people who haven't experienced it and why you continue to put yourself through like the shame and the sadness and you know ostracizing the people that love you and hurting the people that you love you that love you like why do you do it you don't want it but it's Mm -hmm. like you can't stop and it's like this weird for me it was like I I mean I remember I would have these like arguments in my head my brain would be like, don't pick that drink up. Like, fucking don't pick it up. Like, Mm -hmm. this is not who you are. This is not what you're meant to be. And my hand is like not listening to my brain. And it's going like this, very strange. Mm -hmm. And it's scary. And I never really understood mental illness until I dealt with my own alcoholism. Because I always was just like, oh, I would write people off as like being crazy. And now I'm like, when you have that, like that part of yourself that like controls you, it's terrifying. I mean, even my therapist has told me, like, we're all just trying to survive. And that's one way to do it is to check out. Yeah. So it makes sense to me. Yeah. Like, why I did it, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. And I, like, I mean, I had a wonderful childhood. I've never, like, been subject to any kind of abuse. Like, I had a great, like, there was literally no reason for me to become an alcoholic. I remember mm-hmm. thinking that. And that was almost, like, more depressing to me because I was like, okay, you know, there are people that, like, have these horrible traumatic experiences that happen to them, and they're like, this is how they deal with it. Like, I don't have those. Like, what the fuck is wrong with me? I thought the same thing until I went into therapy. Yeah. Then you dig a little deeper, and then you're like, oh, that's yeah. what it is. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but do you believe – because I, I personally, for me – I feel like this is the case for me and I do believe that it's different for everybody and we can't like just say in a general way people are like this Mm -hmm. but do you think that it's possible to just be born like with that kind of like addict alcoholic gene just to have that predisposition I think so towards it because that I think that that's what happened to me because I inherited Mm -hmm. it I think my father had the same problem and Mm -hmm. I think I literally like inherited it from him yeah my brother and sister are like totally normal they you know we all were raised by the same family sure so I definitely think it's hereditary to an extent. And then I think life experience and all that attributes to it as well. But like you're born with something, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that, that kind of escapism. And Mm -hmm. I feel like that never really leaves you. I mean, for me, like my addiction, I now like funnel through my work Mm -hmm. and I have to also check that 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And try to strike a balance. Do you find that your addictive personality comes out in other ways? Yes, definitely. Um, I'm a perfectionist, definitely, when it comes to, like, my work. And it's it's come out a lot in um, just the way I present myself on set mm-hmm. from hearing people talk about how I used to be, mm-hmm. especially. Um It puts me in a whole different mindset going, you know, meeting a new crew and all that because I want to set a good impression and I want to, um, I want to be the best performer I can. And so that I put a lot of pressure on myself. It's almost like overachieving to make up for Mm -hmm. who you were before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Yeah, no, I get that. And that's Mm -hmm. hard too because you know, it's really hard to hide being on camera. Mm -hmm. Like that's your profession and like being intimate with other people. Mm -hmm. You know, I was able to like sort of hide it a little bit, Mm -hmm. like being behind the camera and like shockingly, a lot of people didn't know. And shockingly, a lot of people did know. I remember, (laughs) I remember when I, I went to the dry cleaner and I like gave him a shirt or something and there was like a stain on it. Mm -hmm. And he goes, what is this wine? Because it was always wine, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh no, no, no! It's something so and so." I'm like, "I stop." I'm like, "I stopped drinking," and he goes, "Oh, thank God!" He goes, "Oh, I used to pray for you all the time. I would see you come over, and you." And he was like, "This really sweet, like Iranian man." Mm-hmm. He's like, "You would come over, and you would drop off your dry cleaning, and I see you go to the liquor store at 11 a.m. and I pray for you. I pray for you. I'm so happy." And I'm like, "Dude, my dry cleaner knew wow. I had a fucking problem. <laughs> like, wow. you know what I mean? You think mm-hmm. like." You're so clever. Right. I mean, I used to drink vodka because I thought it didn't smell. <laughs> <laughs> Rationales we come up with. <laughs> yeah. Are you still with the same husband? Yeah. Wow. So how was that for him? Like, did he threaten to leave you? Did he ever leave you? Like, how did he handle that? Because that's a lot on people that we love. Yeah. Um, we've been through a lot. I mean just up and down, you know, me relapsing over and over. God, that was so hard on him. Um, But he never really threatened to leave me, and I'll give him that. Like, he's my best friend. (laughs) That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Did did you think that he held out, like, the belief that you would get sober one day? Yeah. And I did want to get sober. Yeah. is something that I was vocal with him about. And his um, biological dad passed away from a drug overdose. So this is, this hits home for him. This, yeah. So, like, he knew I wanted to get sober and he wanted to help me. And I wanted him to help me. Yeah. But I just, I was so far gone yeah. in the beginning. It was like, I don't want to say I was a lost cause, but I kind of was at the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I get it. It's... Yeah, I mean, it's really hard to see it yourself out of, like, those dark places when you're there. Yeah. Like, I, I, there were definitely times where I was like, am I ever, like, am I ever going to kick this? Mm-hmm. It was really tough. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> how long, can I ask how long you've been sober? Yeah, so off hard drugs, I got sober, like, 2013. Um, pills has been about four years. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Must be. Are you now now that you've been through all of that, has that given you like a perspective on life that has it changed the way that you see the world, other people? Absolutely. How's it? I'm just so much more um emotionally mature, I guess now. It's like before I was just trying so desperately hard to just, I don't know, shut out everything. I don't even know where I was going with this. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I forgot where I was going with that. Well, so you were, you said that you're more emotionally mature Mm -hmm. before you were trying to shut out everything. So I'm imagining that you've developed coping skills. Yeah. you probably didn't have before, right? Like drugs were your coping skills. It was, but even getting sober <clears throat> wasn't um, 
the culprit. I think of that. I think therapy was. Yeah. I think that helped me tremendously. And therapy, I didn't start until I was sober about two years. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, that was really hard. Not not doing therapy and being sober and yeah. just like feeling everything and just like, what yeah. is all this? And I think that what you say is like so incredibly key because I, I think a lot of people think that, oh, all you have to do is like get sober and then mm -hmm. you're fine. But that's not the case because the drugs and alcohol were just the Band-Aid that you were putting on like some kind of deeper wound. Mm -hmm. And so when you rip the Band-Aid off, like you have to treat the wound. Mm -hmm. and, like being sober is not enough. Like there's a reason that you were using drugs and alcohol. So you have to figure out what that reason is and then you have to use other methods mm -hmm. to try to heal that. And that's where the real work begins. Yeah. Because getting, yeah, I remember like, you know, I was like, oh, I'll get sober, then I'll be fine. I'm like, oh, no, just like you said, oh, now I have to feel my feelings. This is terrible. I can't escape this. Mm -hmm. Like, that's rough. It almost got worse before it got better. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I definitely get frustrated sometimes because I'll have, like, a bad day and, you know, I'll look at, like, my husband who <clears throat> he he drinks. He doesn't drink, like, too much. He's not an alcoholic or anything. But, you know, like, he'll, he has a couple of beers a night and, you know, wine on the weekends and – I'm like, man, when you have a hard day at work, you can just like unwind with a beer. Like, I can't fucking do that. And that sucks. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to feel my feelings and I got to like do something else to mm -hmm. to deal with my issues. Yeah. I mean, I've I have therapy, but for me, like the 12 step program is what worked for me. And mm -hmm. it's so different for everyone. But like, yeah, the coping skills that I have learned from having to battle my addiction for me are so valuable. And so, like, in a weird way, I'm terribly grateful that I had that because it forced me to learn a way of life that I wouldn't probably have done otherwise. Mm -hmm. And now, like, it's made me a better person, which is ironic. Do you feel a similar way? I feel like it's made me a better person for sure. Yeah? Yeah. How do you deal with, like, difficult situations now, stress and stuff like that? What are your coping skills? Um... I mean, I was going through a pretty rough time during the pandemic, like especially right before I started therapy. And I was like going outside in the morning and just sitting in the sun for a while, which actually helped. Mm -hmm. And um, trying to meditate and maybe sometimes taking a hot shower. Just, yeah, little things like that. Breathing exercises. Yeah, which, you know, is a lot more impactful than I think some people realize. The it's like thing a whole that, thing to breath work. The thing that surprised me the most is how when I'm feeling something in the moment, you you think it's going to be there forever. Mm -hmm. like it's not going anywhere. And then you do the breathing exercises, and then it, and it subsides, and you're like, wait, that actually did something. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's so hard not to get caught up in that. And one thing that I do try to remind myself is, like, whatever problems, like, like a friend of me, a friend of mine told me once, like, think about all the big problems that you had like last year. And I'm like, and it's hard for me to think about what they were unless they're like, obviously like catastrophic events, like my dad dying or something like that. Um, and I'm like, I don't know. I can't really remember. He's like, that's what this problem is going to be in a year from now. Like this problem that you're having right now that's stressing you out so much, mm -hmm. you're going to not even remember that this happened mm -hmm. in a year. So it's like, trying to pull back and have that perspective is is only achievable if you really like you know take that moment to like calm down calm your mind mm -hmm. do some breathing yeah I just told someone some advice similar to that the other day um just she was asking like what do you do when you know you're going through stress and try to get through it I'm like just think about the hardest thing you ever went through and mm -hmm. you survived that and you thought you weren't going to be able to in the moment, but you did. Yeah. Do you think sobriety is that is that moment for you? Yeah. Absolutely. How did you end up getting sober? Did you go to a treatment or mm -hmm. did you do it yourself? You just did it yourself. Mm -hmm. oh, man. Cold turkey. Man, I could. How? Can you tell me like a little bit more detail about that? Because I tried to do that myself and I couldn't. I had to, I had to go away three times. I had to go away. I mean... Once I just made the decision, that was it for me. It was like 
I didn't want it anymore. I didn't want to be this person anymore. I didn't want to need anything to just be able to function through the day anymore. Yeah. And yeah, once I made that choice, it was pretty easy for me. Was there any one definitive event that was like the breaking point or was it just like after an accumulation of years, you just finally were like enough? You know, I can't really remember one specific event. I think it was just accumulative. Just mm-hmm. so many times it happening over and over, getting caught and sober and then relapsing and mm-hmm. so much. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think kept you from relapsing this time? Um, might be a little vain, but the fact that I started just looking healthier, I think that's been a big motivator for me is, I don't know, I just feel better. I don't want it. Yeah. I don't need it. Yeah. It's like pretty good. I don't even drink. I mean, I'm on antidepressants, so you're not supposed to, but like, I don't think I would even if I wasn't. It's just not, I don't know. I smoke weed. Yeah. (laughs) That's it. So you're like what they call like California sober. Exactly. (laughs) I mean, I used to smoke a lot of weed too, and I would love to go back to smoking weed, but that's actually like what started the second my first like big relapse after seven years was I smoked pot and yeah. I thought, Oh, I can just do this. And I'm like such an addict that like, no, no way. Like I do everything addictively. Like it just took off from there. And then I was right back where I started. So yeah. I literally can't take fucking anything. Yeah. Um, so like I commend you on being able to do that. That's Cause tough. I can't. <laughs> And yeah, I mean, it is, again, like it is different for everybody. So Mm -hmm. what's your relationship with your husband like now? Really good. So much better (laughs) than before. It's crazy. We're just so much closer than we've ever been. And he can trust me now. (laughs) Isn't it the best feeling when you don't have to hide things from people? I think about that a lot Mm -hmm. because I used to hide stuff from my husband. I used to hide like small liquor bottles, Mm -hmm. like joints whatever Mm -hmm. um and I and I think about that now like you know he'll be like oh hey are your keys in your purse and he'll like go into my purse to get my keys and I don't have to go oh fuck Mm -hmm. what's he gonna find in there you know what I mean or like Mm -hmm. oh I'm like going through the closet trying to find something and like oh shit he's gonna find like that to me is one of like the greatest rewards that comes up again and again and again Mm because I was so used to having that knee-jerk reaction all the time of like, oh, fuck, he's going to find something. Yeah. Constantly up and move stashes. And, and like, then like forgetting yeah. where you put them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that was the worst. And then just like tearing your house apart trying to find it. Because you I'm hit it when you were fucked up. Stashes to really? This day. <laughs> I was fine. At my old house, I've moved since then. But yeah, at my old house, I would like occasionally find like, because I always got those little airplane bottles of liquor mm-hmm. and I'd stash them all over the house and occasionally I would come across them or my husband would find it and I'd have to be like, babe, I swear to you, that's like very old. Yeah. Like I didn't know that was there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, he believes me, but you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's funny. Such like, a relief to not have to lie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it's, it's definitely, oh, I feel you on that. So let's get back to porn. <laughs> um so tell me if tell me some of your favorite scenes that you've ever done like if somebody was to go on like a Jennifer White like have a Jennifer White evening like what what should they check out Um I think my favorite one hasn't been released yet but Oh okay are you allowed to say what it is or is it a surprise uh, I can say what it is. Okay. It's going to be for uh, Evil Angel. It's my first showcase ever. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. That's so a big happy. deal. Tell, mm-hmm. Yeah, tell us about it. So um, I did a 11 guy gangbang in that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. That was like brought me back to six and me days. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, it was good times. <laughs> and then what else? And then we got a scene with Brickzilla, all anal, my first double anal, and a blow bang. How was the double anal? So intense. Oh, my God. 
Did you have to like yeah. really work your butthole out first for a while? Yeah. Were you like, how'd you prepare for that? Um, I just bought a really big butt plug and then we shot most of like the, there was like the blowjob portion and then you start to do vag on most of the guys and then there's the DP portion. So then right before the DP part, I just had to like sit down with one of the guys and work it in and then. Once it got to the double portion, I don't know. I think I blanked out at that point. At that point, kind of like <laughs> you're already halfway there, right? Yes. <laughs> Can I ask who the guys were? Yeah, it was um, Jax, Richard M- Mann, and uh, Rob Piper. Okay. So th- they were not small penises. No. If, I feel like if I was doing a double <laughs> anal, I'd pick like the smaller dudes. Yeah, right. No, you just went for it. <laughs> well, Darko. <laughs> <laughs> He believes in me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when is that coming out? Do you know? And is it yeah. just, does it have a name? Uh, Fourth of July, it's coming out and um, we're still working on the name. Okay. Yeah. But I think we've narrowed it down. Okay. I'll wait to say that one. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, people can follow you on social media. I'm sure you'll be promoting the shit out of it. So. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Who are some of your favorite performers to work with? Let's start with guys first. Okay. Um, I love Jax. He's amazing. Um, Rob Piper's great. Uh, Isaiah. <clears throat> I love Isaiah. <clears throat> he's amazing. He's like. He's also just so lovely. Yes. He's such just like a, he's so polite mm-hmm. and like he's quiet and soft spoken. Mm-hmm. He's just like very gentlemanly. Yeah. Like he's he's great. I actually I did a, um, uh, like a Bridgerton parody scene for browsers with him and mm-hmm. like he looks really good in like the cravat and everything like the english gentleman i was like mm-hmm. that suits you yeah very much suits you yeah he's gorgeous <laughs> yeah he's great i really mm-hmm. like him what about girls girls um let's see just shot with uh nicole doshi she's a lot of fun mm-hmm. really sweet yeah yeah so nice. uh cj miles mm-hmm. she's a cutie pie yeah um who else? Just shot with. Oh my God, what's her name? I suck. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I do the same thing. Her name will come to you like after the podcast. Exactly. Like, oh, it was so and so. It's. I noticed that you're you're naming people that you just recently worked with, so you don't have like favorites that stand out like over time. I don't really have favorites. Okay. I mean, I like shooting with everybody. I have standouts that I think like, oh, wow, they did an amazing job on that one. But Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't have favorites. Yeah, I hear you. Mm -hmm. I actually, it's funny. I always ask people that question, but I hate it myself Mm -hmm. because there's so many girls that I love working with. And I'm like, if I tell you, like, I'm going to leave out so many people that I feel equally like passionate about. So Mm -hmm. it feels like an unfair question. So I often do the same thing where I'm like the most recent because that's kind of safe. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Kelly, Kelly Roses, love her. Oh yeah, she's yeah. great. She was just on the show a few like a month ago, I think. Oh cool. She was really cute. Yeah, really cute. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. Um, what is if there's anything about the adult industry that you could change, what would it be? Hmm. Something you could change about the adult industry. Maybe the level of drama. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? There's would, no drama in porn. I would tone that down a little. <laughs> I mean, so we often see drama played out on social media, right? Yes. Do you think <clears throat> that social media is is good for society or a hindrance? Or is it a mixed bag? I'd say it's a mixed bag that is mainly toxic. Mm. Yeah. I don't know that it's good for society so much. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I feel the same. It's a mixed bag. It's like I I see a lot of good that's come out of it. Mm -hmm. A lot of changes in the industry, positive changes, Mm -hmm. I think, have come around because of social media because it gives place a place for people to connect, like Mm -hmm. performers especially to connect and like, you know, talk about experiences that they've had Mm -hmm. and then really bring the attention to like the companies and the brands 
that changes need to be made. Yeah. So I think there's been a lot of positive in that, but it also spins off into often like toxic drama and echo chambers where people just attack each other Mm -hmm. or take their problems to Twitter. Yeah. And just so unnecessary. Yeah. And then the next morning, I mean, (laughs) there's been times that I've been, I've written things when I was drunk and the next morning was like, that was a huge fucking mistake. (laughs) In fact, one of those actually got me banned blacklisted from penthouse for nine years really mm-hmm. oh my god but it was on a forum um so it wasn't on twitter this was before twitter existed this is forever ago mm-hmm. um it was when like mark bell was running penthouse do you remember that no oh dude it was so long ago so it was after guccione sold it to somebody else mm-hmm. and um yeah a little too much sauce and went on a forum and was like penthouse sucks now <laughs> Like, I don't know, because we weren't shooting for them anymore because we shot for them so much, my mom and I. Mm-hmm. And I think I was probably feeling a little butthurt about that. And I was oh. like, the photography's garbage. <laughs> and, uh, and Ever since they... <laughs> and the editor at Penthouse, this is so embarrassing, this is my life. The editor at Penthouse called my mom and was like, uh, your daughter went on this forum and talked all this shit about us. And, like, basically, we're not going to work with you guys for... A long period of time. We weren't shooting for them at the time anyways. Right. But it's always really embarrassing when you're like in your 30s and someone calls your mom <laughs> about something that you did. I could see that. Yeah. It was a little embarrassing. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about the adult industry? Um, I love that it is a safe place for me to just express myself sexually. Mm-hmm. I think that's really, really awesome. Explain to me how it's a safe space because, again, I feel like this goes against the narrative of what a lot of people believe the adult industry to be. Mm -hmm. So explain what you mean by that. It's safe in the sense that we all know that we're getting tested, you know, at the same facilities and um, we're very vocal about consent and stuff like that, which isn't the case, you know outside of porn Mm -hmm. so that's what i mean yeah mm -hmm. which again is something that i think a lot of people find to be unexpected one of the things that that makes me laugh is when people say like oh you know being a porn star is so bad for you it's so dangerous you're having sex with like all of these strangers blah 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 not realizing that like the porn industry is pretty small Mm -hmm. and you're working with a lot of the same people Mm -hmm. over and over again so it's actually not a bunch of strangers. Right. It's like usually the same like 15 dudes. Yeah. <laughs> like over and over again. Exactly. It's yeah. like a little family. <laughs> <laughs> Freaky family. <laughs> so you're hosting the XR CO Awards? Yeah. On May 11th, which is next week. Yes. How exciting. So tell me about that. Um. So I don't have a whole lot of information on that yet. I don't even know where it's going to be at. <laughs> Um, but it's going to be me and Lindsay Ryder. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And yeah, we're going to announce some, some awards. Have you ever hosted <laughs> a show before? Mm-mm. Are you nervous? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have they sent out, has the nominees been announced yet? They just announced them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, they did? Mm-hmm. It's so weird. I haven't heard about all the awards that I was nominated for. I guess I'll have to look it up and find <laughs> the multiple awards that I'm sure my name is in there for. <laughs> I mean, award ceremonies are not like the best. The best of friends. No. <laughs> no. Won like very few awards in my career. I've never won anything. Okay. Oh my God. Like <laughs> losers united. Yeah. You and me. Like, yeah, we've never won awards. <laughs> Fuck awards. Fuck you guys. However, I mean, look at you. You're you're hosting. Yeah. So, I mean, there's that, you know, it's, it's interesting. Mm-hmm. So like, do. clearly you, you know, have accolades. Yeah. I mean, Dirty Bob hit me up and I said, sure. <laughs> I have there. I mean, the XRCO awards has been around for a long time. Yeah. We found some old footage of the XRCO awards when my mom was working before I was born. Oh, wow. And she like went up on stage <clears throat> to actually, no, it was after I was born because she started working in the adult industry I was born in 78 yeah it might have been after I was born I'm not sure anyways it was 
clearly very young. Mm -hmm. Um, and she went up on stage to announce something and no, Ron Jeremy went up on stage to announce something. And then I think my mom won something and then she like comes up and like grabs his balls on stage. And <laughs> it's like, this, whole, <laughs> this is, I mean, this is like in the seventies, you know, this is so long ago, mm -hmm. but that's how long that award show has been around for. Wow. It's pretty cool. That's crazy. Yeah. And it was crazy to find like that old footage. Yeah. Totally nuts. What are your goals for um, your future in the adult industry? I want to see if I can win some awards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to try. I haven't really tried. Any ones in particular that you really want? Performer of the Year. Yeah. For sure. AVN. Do you yeah. think that maybe the showcase is going to bring you closer to that? Because, I mean, it sounds like mm -hmm. you you did a lot for that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's going to be a big um, – Thing. What else? I've, I'm doing so much. I mean, I'm feature dancing, you know, every month. I'm shooting for the big companies. Um, just shot for, what, Deeper yesterday. Mm -hmm. So I got the red. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, do they actually dictate what color your nails are? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yep. <laughs> for Which... Vixen, I think it's a uh, French tip and then Deeper, it's red. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I never had that kind of power. No. <laughs> no, I could never dictate what girls like manicures were. And sometimes I really wish that I could because I'd be shooting something that was supposed to be like some all natural like girl next door. And then some girl would show up with like neon fluorescent <laughs> green nails with fucking diamonds all over it. And I'm like, it's not going to work. What am I going to do? What are you going to do? Hands in the hair. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> the entire scene. <laughs> Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for coming by. It was such a pleasure yeah. to get to know you, to see you again. Yes. Um, and, like, big congrats on, like, kicking the addiction in the sobriety. I know, like, you know, obviously from personal experience, like, what that's like. And I don't think that unless someone's been through it, they can really, like, understand what a tremendous achievement it was. So I'm mm. going to give you an award for that. Thank you. you get the sobriety <laughs> My first award. award. <laughs> And then um, we'll do that little bonus Q&A for my Patreon members afterwards, if cool. that's okay. Yeah. So uh, to wrap this episode up, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Yes. So you can find me on Twitter at JenWhiteXXX and Instagram at JenWhite2.0 and OnlyFans at JenniferWhiteXXX.com. Fantastic. And you guys can find me on Instagram at Holly Randall, also on Twitter at Holly Randall. And of course, if you want to support this podcast and watch these live streamed and check out the bonus Q and A's that I just mentioned, also behind the scenes from my fine art shoots, I'm working on that book. It's coming. Um, and so much more. Go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. If you're listening to this on the audio platforms, please go ahead and give me five stars. Give me a rating. You can go to ratemypodcast.com slash HRU to do that. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, hit that like button and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for being here and I'll see you next week. <laughs>